So what is a bearing fault frequency? Well, an anti-friction bearing or rolling element bearing consists of four parts, the inner race, the outer race, the rolling elements, and the cage assembly. A problem or defect in any one of these four parts will generate a vibration at its own unique, predictable frequency. In fact, the bearing manufacturer will provide the four frequencies. They are the ball pass frequency inner race, the ball pass frequency outer race, the ball spin frequency, and the cage or fundamental train frequency. The frequencies are often abbreviated as shown. At first, the abbreviation may seem a little difficult, but you'll start to remember them soon enough. The question is, what do the frequencies mean? Well, let's look closer at a sample bearing. We'll draw a line across both races between two rolling elements. We'll use the line to help us observe what happens when the bearing is in motion. Let's say the outer race is fixed and that the inner race is turning with the shaft. Look at the mark on the inner race and count the number of rolling elements it passes in one rotation of the shaft. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and maybe a little more. When we look at the manufacturer's ball pass frequency inner race, we find a value of 12.04, and we now know what the value means. It's the number of rolling elements that a specific point on the inner race will pass with each rotation of the shaft. If the mark on the race represents a rough spot, a ball pass frequency inner race vibration will be generated at 12.04 times the turning speed of the shaft. The resulting frequency we would refer to as a fault frequency. The number provided by the manufacturer is often referred to as a multiplier of shaft speed. Now let's look at the mark on the outer race and count the number of rolling elements that will pass across it in one rotation. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and maybe a little more. Looking at the manufacturer's literature, we find a ball pass frequency outer race of 9.02. If there is a defect in the outer race, 9.02 rolling elements will cross it with every rotation of the shaft. So an outer race vibration will be generated at a frequency equal to 9.02 times the turning speed. Now let's draw a mark through the center of a rolling element. This time we'll count the number of times it spins in one rotation of the shaft. One, two, three, and part of another. In the manufacturer's literature, we find a ball spin frequency multiplier of 3.73. If there is a defect in one or more of the rolling elements, a fault frequency will be generated at 3.73 times shaft speed. Now let's look at a bearing with a more visible cage assembly. You'll notice that the cage and rolling elements are slowly working their way around the center of the bearing, in the same direction as the inner race. In the majority of industrial bearings, the cage will complete approximately 35 to 45 percent of one rotation with each rotation of the shaft. We would expect to find in the manufacturer's literature a multiplier less than one. The manufacturer's multiplier, correctly known as the fundamental train frequency, is 0.44. In this particular bearing, the cage completes 44% of a rotation with each rotation of the shaft. If there is a defect in the bearing cage, a fundamental train fault frequency will be generated at 0.44 times shaft speed. Let's summarize. You now know how to calculate four bearing fault frequencies. The ball pass frequency inner race, the ball pass frequency outer race, the ball spin frequency, and the fundamental train frequency. To calculate the values, the manufacturer's multiplier times the turning speed on the shaft equals the fault frequency.